What's up, everybody? Hello, hello. hello. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Aspen, you want to close that door? I'm sure we'll have some more people coming in, but just to be a cut down the noise and everything. So. Well, welcome to the next level. You guys are like next level Christians in here. And the reason is because you came today. That's why. Next level Christians. No, the point of this, um, like we talked about, is just to take what was in the sermon and be able to tease it out, be able to discuss it. Um, you know, the things that we've been covering specifically through chapter one, for some people, it's like brand spanking new. For some people, it's like this is something maybe they've never heard or probably more of a reality, never understood the significance. Hmm. And uh, so the point of this class is to be able to take some things and, and tease it out. Stuff that I couldn't talk about up front because there's just not enough time. Um, or maybe it's more story related. Like it's stories that I want to hear from you guys. You know, sermons are a monologue, they're not a dialogue. So with that as the backdrop, <clears throat> I guess I, I, I wanted I want to go into this with, with a question. Okay? And the question is, why don't we as Christians experience more of God's power? I mean, the sermon today was was about the power of God, right? And it's very clear based on Ephesians chapter 1 that the power that raised Christ from the dead, that seated him in the heavenly realms, that put everything under his feet, you know, that, that's going to fill the church, all of that power is there. But why don't we experience it? So I'll start with that just as a question. Hey, Ken. Welcome. He's coming. Oh, Mary's coming in. Okay. So I guess, I, let's just open that up question up. Why is it that if the power that did all those things is there, why don't we experience it more? Yes? They don't believe it. Okay. Oh, that's what I was going to say. They don't, they, they, they question, it. well, God, you know, you do know what I did. And, you know, I can't even, you know leave my neighbor to understand anything about God, how am I going to have any power? Like, really, just me? Yeah. I don't got what it takes. Yeah. I'm not like Moses. We don't experience the power. What, what I'm hearing there is because I'm the problem. It's In other words, the, 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 the limitation of the power is because the limitations of me. There's a clog in the connection. Yeah, there, yeah that's right. There's a... There's a lot of hair in the pipe, you know, <laughs> something like that. If something that's keeping the power from from flowing. Okay. I'm too much, I'm too much of a, you know, I don't like conflict with anybody else. And I don't want to get in anybody else's space. So, you know, I'll just keep it to myself. It just works better. Yeah. Okay. So it's maybe, uh, so I've heard two things. One of them is we don't, we don't believe it. We don't believe that it's there. Also, the problem is me. We don't experience it more because the problem is me. I'm the broken one. If I were a better Christian, if I tried harder, if I read my Bible more, went to church more, those sort of things. You know, if I did all that, then I could experience more of God's power. What's well, maybe another thing? We don't want that. Annette. Oh, um, just one sec. Annette. In, in uh, Charles Dickens' uh, book, Oliver, Oliver goes and asks Mr. Bumble for more. Mm. But he's asking the wrong person. Mm. He's living like he's an orphan. And too often we live like we're an orphan rather than going to God. Mm. So we don't ask. And, and it didn't go well for Oliver because he did that. Mm. He got kicked out of the orphanage. He, you know, ended up with uh, some... Uh, Pocket thieves and all of that, you know? Mm, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're going to the wrong person. We're not asking for it. We're, we're, we're looking to the world. We're looking to, we're looking to my Bible for power. Yeah. You know? We're, we're looking to my church for power. We're looking to things rather than 
the one who created those things. Okay? Eric, what were you going to say? Uh, I was going to say, you know, sometimes we don't let God be God. Mm. Mm. Unpack that more. What do you mean by that? We don't um, let God be God in, in what way? We don't pray enough for the Spirit to control us. Okay. Us insight, wisdom, knowledge. Okay. Okay. I think going with that, you have to tie it with what you had mentioned with belief. I mean, you can go to it and like you can pray to God, but the, there's the passage that ask and you shall receive. But like that ask and you shall receive, you, you need to believe as well. That what you're asking, God will do. He can't do, but He will do. So there's an element of belief that goes with the asking. It's like a, it's a twofold thing. It's interesting that in that passage, in that passage about believing, it talks about a double-minded man. And it says the double-minded man. What does it say? He is unstable in all he does. So you're right. When it comes to asking, like what you said, Eric, for a lot of it, maybe we're just not asking for it. Maybe what Annette says, we're asking the wrong person. We're going to the wrong places. But if we do go to God, there is a matter of, I'm going to ask you, but I have to believe. It's, it's, it's also a, a, a sense of, I believe you're going to do something. Therefore, I'm going to wait around long enough for you to do it. Yeah, wait with expectation. Wait with expectation. That's right. Mm -hmm. I think, I think another thing is, is sometimes the reason why we don't experience more power is because of fear. I, I'm afraid that if I ask for God more of God's power, I'm going to have to change the way I live. I'm going to have to start saying no to some stuff. <laughs> and, and I'm not ready to give up. I'm not ready to give up all my choices. I, I, don't, I don't want the full relationship with Jesus because I, I kind of like the Jesus in the box that I got currently right now. So maybe it's fear. I think another reason why we don't experience more of the power of Jesus is because we think that power looks like this. And we don't realize that power from Jesus may look like that. What do I mean by that? God, show your power. I need more money in my bank account. God, I'm asking you to show your power. I believe you can do it. I'm not unstable. I know you can do it. In my bank account, what does God do? Thanks. <laughs> he sends bills. More of them. <laughs> can any of you relate to something like this? <laughs> no. What? Yes. That really happens. Uh, it's so it's so interesting how as you say, okay, God, I want more of you in my life. And it's, it's almost, well, it's laughable. Cheryl and I have been talking about this as of late. As uh, it seems like one thing after another, after another, after another seems to be happening with Cliff and Cheryl. Now, in my journey with Cheryl, she is loving where God has her. God is doing some amazing things. And yet it's like one thing after another, after another, after another. And so, Cheryl, what, what are you choosing to do now? You're just Laugh. laughing about it. You know? It's like, what else can go wrong? What else could go wrong? If anybody has an idea, I'm sure it can happen in the <laughs> Send me a memo. <laughs> so I think another reason why we don't experience more of the power of God is because we're looking for the wrong thing. Amen. You know? We're looking for God to fix my spouse. And so we just wait. Fix him. <laughs> <laughs> not realizing the power of God was meant to change you I remember praying many times that God would fix my marriage going through some stuff with Melinda and I and we've had a lot of issues over the years and we've always we've always had a, a good marriage but there have been times where I would have given it a C maybe a C minus other times it's a B, other times it's an A. I don't think I've ever had a D, maybe. But I remember praying, God, why don't you fix her? <laughs> I mean, 
why can't she be good like me? I mean, <laughs> seriously, I'm a pastor and all. I got my act together. Why don't you fix my wife? And I don't know if any of you have ever prayed that prayer for the other st- other person. Absolutely not. <laughs> God, you know, why don't you... I know you, you darling. <laughs> God, why don't you fix my wife? And what was really interesting was... The more that I, I got to say this before my wife comes in. The, 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 <laughs> well, I have to. You know, no, put that thing away. Uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, like I know how to operate it. <laughs> You're not a really good IT guy, Cliff. Jeez. Um, anyway, um, what I found was, and I've shared this a couple different times, even from up front. In 2016, I I was at the end of my rope, just frustrated. Why can't this thing get any better? And I remember writing my note, writing my my wife a letter. And God used that letter to to reveal something to me. That the problem wasn't so much my wife, even though she is a problem. Just kidding. Uh, The problem wasn't so much my wife. The problem was that I was a passive husband. I was a passive husband. And, and God has been showing me some things over the years. I am such a different husband than I was back in 2016. And God used my wife with all of the stuff to reveal something in me that I just didn't see. I thought I was just being a nice guy. I thought I was just trying to be kind. What I realized was that actually my passivity in my marriage was affecting my marriage. And it changed the way that I was a husband. It changed the way that I parented. It's changed the way that I pastor. Because my passivity was affecting all of those areas. So I think sometimes we say, okay, God, I want you to show your power. But I'm looking for you to show your power in fixing them, not realizing the power of God that he wants to do in you and me. So as we see this this power thing... We want more of God's power. Um, I think sometimes another thing when it comes to power is we're looking for the the supernatural. You know, if if God would just do something supernatural, like, you know, give me 26 hours in a day because I need that, right? I don't know about you, but I need more hours in the day. That's what I need. Instead of realizing that, no, I may just have my priorities in the wrong place. I'm natural yeah I, I'm looking for the supernatural from God when when he works through the natural he works in those ways and that doesn't mean he can't do the supernatural but God is God's power is always on display if I see it so I guess what I want to do today is as, as we lay the backdrop looking at power and looking at the, the various ways that we maybe withhold from seeing more power, I want to talk about some things of how can you and I put ourselves into a position to experience more of God's power in our life. And ideally, if it did it in here, it could infect out there. That's what I want to see. Or, in your case, back in your home church, you know, back in your family, wherever this is at. And which, by the way, okay, your first name again is? Leslie. Leslie. Okay, so Leslie is here. You want to just explain what your... Here. I'm here visiting Life Center, staying with Cheryl, and soaking in all things that I possibly can. Because where do you live? In Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee. So she is up spending a week job shadowing, just kind of being a part of things. She came up to the conference yesterday. We're blessed to have you here today, Leslie. And uh, that she's going to be walk, watching things before she goes back. And the ideal is the thing she's learning here, which is our mission, Equipping people to make an eternal impact in the world. Getting equipped to go back on your front line to make an eternal impact. That's the point. That's why we do what we do. Okay. So with that as the backdrop, it's Leslie or for all of us here. How can you and I better participate with what God wants to do so that his power is seen more effectively in you and me? So with that, I guess I want to ask. How have you seen God's power on display in your life in the last week?
How have you seen God's power on display in your life in the past week? Kind of a hard question, isn't it? Gave me extra patience. Hmm. For who? <laughs> For me. Oh, good. Okay. All right. <laughs> patience with yourself. Okay, you can call it out. <laughs> there she is. Here. Oh, I just admit. <laughs> You know, when I think about that, I, I almost think I want to come up with something supernatural. You know? Yeah, yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's instead of what, you know, maybe what he's just bringing to our hearts during the week. Yes. Is, might be, you know, the biggest thing. That's right. You know, your crackpot analogy is, yes. you know, is really good, and it's like, uh, yeah, man. Being willing to let the crack show. Yes. And, uh, yeah. That's right. That's right. Yes. I was going to say something very similar to that. Yeah. The the revelation that he's already given us everything that we need. There's nothing more we have to do. Okay. That's that was my biggest thing mm. so far in the last seven days. Is wow. He's already done it all. Yes. Yes. It's not that I have. 32 more mountains to climb and 75 more prayers to do and you Don't know it's like he's now. already yeah, done that yeah. you know yeah. I just needed to see that he had I needed yeah. to change my perspective and surrender it and submit that's right that's right yeah. he's already provided it all, all right, my yeah. first thought was well provision well he already did all that like that's that's not that's not new in the last week he already did that Correct. it was the revelation that he did it <laughs> and just a reminder that how confident God is in us, you know, about our cracks, you know, because when you talked about the footstool thing, and mm -hmm. and I was reading that, you know, Psalm 110 is is apparently one of the most quoted psalms yes. in the New Testament. Yes. And in Hebrews, you know, it says that, you know, after Jesus made the once forever sacrifice he sat at the right hand of God and since then he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool mm -hmm. and that's us you know something you know? significant that you just said that I was reading this weekend I, I can't remember what book it was in because I read way too much it is uh, that whole significance about God sat down mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he sat yes why did he sit? Because it was finished. It was done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to stand and rule. He sat down. And you know what he keeps saying to me? Two words. <laughs> I just had him. Stand down. <laughs> He's like telling me, stand down. You know how a, a officer will tell you when you're you're like your rising up. Yes, your attention. You know, stand down. Yeah. And I, I, he keeps saying to me, stand down, which is don't keep trying to do this. Like, would you just sit? And I don't mean be idle and passive, but uh, <laughs> like, stop picking up the rule book. Stop picking up the plan. Stop picking up your insulin. Stop. Stand down and watch me. And then his power can be in me. That's what he's been doing in my life the last yes. week. Yeah. Anybody else? I was enjoying his power in nature. Mm. <laughs> and just thinking of his power over that and over the birds and over the heat and the cold and just the stars and everything that we could see, which we just sort of ignore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and often we great. Mm. Yeah. And then the flowers are just coming up and I'm just loving the smell of the dirt around and just mm -hmm. getting in flowers and mm -hmm. <coughs> getting the leaves. I'm just resting in him more. Yes, that's good. Sure. That's where I've been this week. Yes. And then music um, always makes me think for him and closer to him. 
Yes. Great hands. So this past week, um, <clears throat> last few weeks have been a pretty, really the last month has just been a pretty busy time for me. Uh, between church stuff, between I had a, a retreat back in uh, March over in uh, New Jersey, and then also we had the conference. I spoke at GCU Chapel, uh, Grace Christian University, in their chapel service. It's just been a, a very busy time, and that add on there, my son and my daughter-in-law moved away, and and so we, I was trying to be present with everybody, fully present, and do everything, whatever. But I felt like Mr. Scatterbrain. <coughs> um, I felt like I had all these plates that were in the air, and I'm spinning this plate, and I'm running around I'm spinning this one. And if you ever watched plates spinning, you know, they begin to wobble, and you're like, no! And then you quick run over, and you don't want to get them to fall. And I, it's it, this was, it's felt like that. And so last weekend, this past weekend, um, last, not like, because we're in this one, last one, it was, uh, became very clear to me that I think I have ADHD. I think I have the ability, the inability to focus. And um, so I decided to watch some YouTube videos, you know, because there's got to be a way to beat this thing. So I watched my YouTube videos, and uh, one of the things they talk in there about is called doing a dopamine detox. Now, do you know what dopamine is? Mm -hmm. Dopamine is the pleasure drug that's in your brain. And it gets activated uh, through various means. You know, one of the ways that you would think about is, is like you see something beautiful. When I see something beautiful, it activates a little bit of dopamine. There's the pleasure thing. Um, also, you know, one of the ways is actual sex. The release of a big dump of dopamine with an orgasm. That's the, the idea of the dopamine dump. But did you know that this thing gives you dopamine. And so every time you do this, it's been shown the brain actually gives a little surge of dopamine. When I watch something that I want to watch, it's a little surge. So we're always looking for dopamine. So I'm watching this video, and in there it talks about how we have to do a dopamine detox, which means you take your phone, you put it away, you start living differently, and you take like an entire day, just put it away. And I'm like, this is good. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to do this. So well, no, I can wait to do it, but I realize that I need to do it. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to do the dopamine detox. That was a Sunday night. Monday morning, thinking about doing this. I get up, and I'm in the shower, and this little still voice speaks to me. In the shower, God speaks to me, right, Cheryl? I, that's my place. <laughs> It's like I'm in there, it's getting ready for the day, it's Monday morning, I mean I love what I get to do here at church. So I get to come and I get to work, I get to be a part of things, and I'm thinking about all the stuff that I get to do. I get to spin more plates this week, it's going to be great, I love it. And this little voice, John, you remember the one of the fruit of the spirit of self-control. And I'm like... Oh yeah, that's right. The ability to control myself is a work of the Holy Spirit. I don't care how many YouTube videos I watch, how many books that I read, how many things that I go through. If I want to experience the power to live a less chaotic, more focused, balanced life, it's not going to come because I got a better system to do it. <laughs> And I was like, ah, oh, I needed that reminder. My life this past week was so different. Oh, I still had chaos. I still had a lot of responsibilities. But I was not stressing like I was. I felt like I was walking through life with purpose. I felt like I was present in those moments. I didn't feel like I was constantly trying to say, no, don't do this. No, don't do this. Don't give in to the distraction. Don't do this. It was, it was an experience of the power of God. But what did it require? And that's what I talked about this morning. It required a sense of surrender, that I can't fix it. It required a submission. God, you have designed the way to do it. And then it required humility. 
recognition that I can't do it on my own. So I wanted to talk about that. I wanted to go to Galatians chapter 5 with our text this morning, with the little time we have left. Galatians chapter 5. There's tons and tons and tons and tons of awesome stuff in Galatians. But if we go to verse 16, Galatians 5, verse 16, Paul says, he says, So I say, live by the Spirit. Live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit. And the spirit, what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under law. So if we were to draw it out, if we draw the three-part man here, we have the spirit. And like we talked about, we're alive in Christ, okay? So uh, we, we have life. The life of God is living in here. So this thing, and remember, there's this chain link, barbed wire fence, whatever, called the sealing of the Spirit, all the way around that thing. So we are sealed with a guarantee that He's never leaving us. The Spirit is present in our life. But we also have this thing called the soul, and then the body, which is like the tent. Body is definitely breaking down, right? So we have the body and the soul, which is still affected clearly by it. So what Paul says, he says, if we're going to live by the Spirit, we will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So where is the flesh? The flesh is down here. Now the flesh is against the Spirit. Remember, the flesh... The way we can define the flesh is self-sufficient living. It's the, the life of me. That's, that's the best I can put, it's the best I can put out there. It's all my thoughts, my beliefs, my attitudes, my, my, all the emotions I can have, and all my willpower that I can provide. It's all of that stuff. Because I have the mind, the emotions, and the will. So I make a choice. Am I going to choose with my will? Am I going to choose to live from the flesh? Or am I going to choose to live from the spirit? Now, if I choose to live from the flesh, it makes it very clear. The flesh needs laws. The flesh needs, needs laws because without that, there's no telling what this thing may do. No doubt. So the laws that are there, the law that was given was that which God says, okay, if you're going to live on your own with the flesh, this is what you have to do. Do this, don't do that. Do this, don't do that. Do this, don't do that. Because that's what the flesh needs. It needs a law. But I can turn to, like we've said before, the negative flesh. Or we can turn to the positive flesh. If you go to Ephesians chapter 5, it says, if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. If you're led by the Spirit, you are not under law. The law was designed to keep track of this thing. But if we are not following this, but following this, then we don't need the law. We don't need that anymore, because we're led by the Spirit. The Spirit's going to tell us what to do. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Uh, this is what Paul says. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. So he says, if you're going to live according to the flesh, which is going to require law, do this, don't do that, do this, don't do that, and you need better systems, two, three, four-step plans, whatever it is, you need this stuff in order to do this. If you are going to live according to the flesh, you need all the systems you can get. And sometimes you're going to end up on the negative side. I'm using negative things to meet my needs. Or I may end up on the positive side. I never understood the positive side. I never did. 
I didn't understand that going to church can be the positive flesh. Reading my Bible can be positive flesh. If I'm looking to going to church or reading my Bible or praying to meet all my needs in Jesus Christ, it can become idolatry. If I'm relying on the clothes that I wear to make me fit in better with everybody, it can become idolatry. If I'm relying on the right version of the Bible to make me right with God and with everybody else, it can become idolatry. So all of those things are simply the flesh's way of trying to control my life. And if I'm using the flesh, well, guess what? It's going to make me pretty miserable to be around. Now, I may fake it for a while, but it's eventually going to come out. In my life, as I was trying to keep all my plates spinning, I was becoming very short with my wife, short with my kids. I'm here, there, and everywhere. Even I was talking to uh, Brandon, who's been doing an internship here. And even Brandon, his comment was, John, you are very busy. And I'm like, ooh, what a badge of honor. <laughs> Wait a second. Someone told me once, we never in Scripture find a picture of Jesus running anywhere. He always walked. And he had time for everything the Father wanted him to do. And I realized, well, you know what? All those things is really it's just John in the flesh trying to meet all my needs. And watching YouTube videos is not going to help me with this. Instead, when I turn to the Spirit, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. As we wrap up today, what I want you to see is, if you want to see God's power in your life, just turning to doing more of the right thing is not going to get it. Trying to be a better Christian is not going to get it. Simply begging God, God, show me your power without being willing to surrender and submit to what he wants to do is not going to get it. But when you live by the Spirit, when you say, God, it's not about me. It's not about me trying to get my needs met on my own. I'm simply going to use my will to choose to live from the Spirit. And so how do you live from the Spirit? What does that even look like? How do I choose to live from the Spirit? What's that? It takes faith. It takes faith. That's right. It takes faith to believe that God is who he says he is, to believe that that power is actually resident in you and to step out with the courage that it takes, which is what I talked about yesterday, the courage that it takes to step out and say, God, I don't understand how you're going to make all this work, but I believe you can. And God will lead you and he will guide you. And then I want to take another step. And when he puts something on your heart, John, do this. Okay, yep, I'm going to do it. John, do you trust me with this? Yep, I do. Okay, I'm going to take a step. It's not something that's this easy plan. But I'm telling you, once you begin to get used to it, God, it's about you. Lord, I'm not going to live just to get all my needs met here. I'm going to choose to live according to what you've designed me to do. And the more you do it, the more power you will see in your life. And it's going to show up in this thing called love. And it's going to show up in this thing called joy. And it's going to show up in this thing called peace and patience. And you mentioned about that, Cliff. That's the way the power of God shows up. Because you're right. We're looking for the supernatural. Oh, man, I want to see God do amazing things. When instead, you know what? When my daughter was being an absolute beast, I had the ability to still love her. Now, that's the power of God on display. When my life was chaotic around me, I had peace. Now, that's the power of God on display. So, I, my, my thing this morning was I wanted you to see the way to experience the power is not just by coming to Frontline Bible Church, even though it's a great church. It's not just by showing up here. It comes down to saying, God, I surrender. I submit. Rather than choosing to get my needs met through negative or positive flesh, I'm simply going to choose to live by the Spirit. And in this, that's when I will see your power on full display. Okay? So, uh, I wish we had more time. Uh, did you want to say anything? No, God's just talking to me. Okay, okay, all right. <laughs> My lips were moving, but God was Okay, moving. all right. Uh, thank you guys for coming. Hey, uh, Micah, can I ask you to go to prayer for us today? Sure. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Lord, uh, thank you for bringing us here today and uh, just having time with you, uh, learning to um, 
live less as ourselves and uh, let your spirit show through us. Uh, I just pray that you'd watch over us as uh, we leave this week. Um, just help us to go to your word and uh, just be looking around us for ways that um, you're trying to show us uh, yourself and your son. And I just pray that you would uh, give us all a great day and praise your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Micah. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks for coming today. Thank you, Micah.